Hey, welcome to the channel. My name's Phil. Um, so yes, yesterday I was looking at Bruno Mars's song Locked Out of Heaven, which my band used to open sets with. And um, I'm basically, I've basically been relearning that song, finding out how rusty I am at the guitar, stuff like that. So today's a continuation of that. Um, I've, uh, I've practiced the song a little bit and um, I've basically totally revamped the Helix patches that I've been using. So I spent a fair bit of time on that. I've had to use uh, snapshots, which uh, for this one song is fantastic. I'm really happy about that. I think it remains to be seen how that's going to work for the rest of the songs in the set that I'll be, uh, I'll be learning in the coming days. Um, but for now, it's great. So what I think I'm going to do today is uh, talk you through the logic of my Helix setup and uh, you know show you how uh, how it all works if I can figure out how to show you what's on my screen because I don't know anything about computers or cameras or making videos so uh, yeah after this introduction I'm going to hit pause on the camera I'm gonna do some googling and I'm gonna see if I can figure out a nice way to do that and I'll have learned something and then maybe I can tell you how I did that as well so uh, yeah, see you in a second, hopefully. Okay, hopefully that worked. Hopefully this is recording. Hopefully I won't have to do this again. <laughs> right then, here is my little setup. Um, so let's just quickly talk through it. First of all, I have an always on um, compressor. Um, it's the Blue Comp Treb model from the legacy settings there. Uh, it adds a load of treble to it. I've actually got the uh, the compression turned down. I'm more interested in the um, the treble boost aspect that this brings to the signal. Um, it's nice. It makes your um, uh, cleans glitter a little bit more. It, it's it's a good sound. It's something um, that the the edge from U2 would do. Obviously, he, I don't think he uses a Helix. I think he's got the real pedals. But all the same, if it's good enough for the edge, it's good enough for me. Um. This reverb here is not doing anything at the moment. We're going to ignore that. I have a flanger. Um, again, legacy model analog flanger. This is the one that I like the sound of the best. Fairly extreme settings um, for this particular flanger, but it just gives an airy, whooshy kind of sound. I have a um, Tube Screamer style distortion going on. Um, you know, fairly mild. I have the industrial fuzz going on here which is a very aggressive nasty fuzz and then i have a reverb just like a kind of basic spring reverb like it gets onto an amp this all goes to path 2b which is here which goes into an amp which is modeled after a roland jazz chorus 120. Um, i used to use these back when i worked on cruise ships and um, they uh, take pedals uh, very nicely they have a very um um their, their, their characteristic sound is that they don't have any character and I, I really like that for some reason so uh, that's one path right so the guitar goes compressor flanger and it goes through the distortions through the reverb into this amp the other path here we split off it goes from the compressor it goes to the next path then it goes to this EQ now this EQ is just functioning as an off switch okay when the EQ is on the level is set to minus 60 so uh, if I engage the EQ, it's like a brick wall is built here and no sound gets through. Or, you know, sound at minus 60 dB goes through, which is essentially no sound at all. I think I might be wrong. I think 60, minus 60 dB is equivalent of one millionth of the original amount of sound. I'm sure there are some sound engineers out there that could correct me on that, but that's what I am led to believe. That is going... So let's imagine this is off for a second. That's going into a thing which is modeled on some kind of orange amplifier. I like this model because it's kind of like um, gritty and fuzzy and kind of messed up. And, uh, you know, um, it's basically the opposite of the jazz chorus. This is super duper clean and uncharacterful and this is fizzy nasty and, uh, you know, I like it. Then this goes into the Elephant Man um, delay, rather echo sound which uh, is based somewhat on um, the uh, deluxe memory man um, electroharmonics 
uh, which again the Edge uses. Now the thing is, I'm not like a particularly big fan of uh, U2. They're fine. I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't really have an opinion on them. But I, I am quite impressed with the sort of textures that the Edge manages to get with his uh, guitar. Like that's that is rather impressive to me. So two particular things here that I've uh, taken from the Edge would be having this uh, trebly compressor at the beginning of the. Uh, the signal chain and having this uh, particular delay towards the end of the signal chain. Um, I'll go through and play these in a second so you get to hear what they sound like. Um, now another um, thing I borrowed here is uh, this uh, industrial fuzz uh, is modelled on the um, Zvex Fuzz Factory uh, which uh, I first heard about uh, because it's the main distortion used by Matt Bellamy from Muse. Um, I actually have one, um, and yeah, it's a great pedal, uh, but I don't really want to take it out with me uh, live. I like having everything all in one box, which I could get to do with the Helix. Okay, right, so snapshots. You can have eight different snapshots, and the thing about snapshot is you, you can just choose some settings for a particular snapshot, and then, uh, you know, when you press a pedal on the pedal board, when I press pedal number one, I get my clean sound. So let's investigate that. So this clean sound, what have we got? The EQ is on, so this amp is essentially off. So we've basically just got this compressor, this reverb, and this amp. And I should mention as well, the amps are panned hard left and right. So this amp here is panned left, this amp here is panned right. So you should only hear this in the right hand uh, speaker or earphone or whatever. Okay, so, uh, you know, so it's a fairly basic uh, guitar tone, you know. A um, little bit of spring reverb, it's fine. It's for the, uh, you know, that part of the song. It's more or less what the song sounds like. That's what I was going for. Right then, moving on to the next snapshot. I'm going to just show you the list here, and then I'm going to use the foot pedal to select the next one. We have fuzz. So you can hear a little bit of noise there. I might put a noise gate in at some point to get rid of that noise, but I mean, to be honest, if you're using a fuzz, the noise is the least of your worries, because it's, uh, it's noisy, that's kind of the point of it. So this, it's the same as the clean sound, but with additional fuzz, that's literally it. So, now, I'm on the fence about taking this reverb off. You know what, I'm going to take the reverb off and save this here preset with no reverb. So when I go to the clean sound on the foot pedal, we've got reverb. When I go to the fuzz, no reverb. That's better, I like that better. So yeah, it's a spiky nasty fuzz. If I go to the, uh, you can hear the amount of handling noise from the guitar there. If I go bridge pickup, single coil, That's pretty gnarly. I'm actually using the uh, middle pickup position, which is the, uh, you know, um, on my guitar, I have a bridge and a neck pickup, so it's the, uh, both pickups on together at the same time. And uh, there's a coil tap, so I have them both as humbuckers, and that cuts down somewhat on the handling noise that you get with a fuzz. So it sounds like this. Okay, so, not a particularly nice sound, but that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, I want something ugly that I can use every now and then, because sometimes you want things to sound ugly, and fuzz is really, you know. You know, it could be pretty ugly. I just really use this uh, to go. To lead into the chorus of the song. So speaking of the chorus, for the chorus I use the next snapshot, which I'm going to do with my foot here, the delay sound. So for delay, we have our little Tube Screamer model on, um, and we have um, this EQ has switched off, this amp has been engaged, and this delay is on. Um, remember it's panned hard uh, left, so what you should hear is most of the sound coming from the right, and then the delay will be on the left, like this. See? Hey, 
etc etc i could noodle with that all day i love delays um this gives us some stereo width so when we arrive at the chorus we get a nice wide sound um so that's uh, pretty much all there is to that now the next patch we have snapshot stereo drive now this one is not quite perfect yet but uh, I did some work on it this morning and it's as good as it's going to be for today now all this is it's the same thing as the stereo patch but minus this uh, here delay so we just get this amp sound plus the amp sound on the other side this amp is basically always on the clean amp is always on so what I was going for here was like a double tracked sound so Hmm. I'm considering turning the reverb off. I'm going to leave that on for now. But you see what I mean? I want to go. Funnily enough, the actual um, touchstone I was going for with this was uh, something like the guitar tone from the single American Idiot by Green Day. Again, not the biggest fan of Green Day. They're fine. I don't really have a strong opinion on either way. But... They, uh, the American Idiot album is fantastic, incidentally. Like, regardless of my opinion on Green Day, that's a fantastic album. That's, uh, you know, undeniable. Um, but the guitar tones on that album are just immense, and uh, I'd love to be able to do that just by myself. But, uh, you know, so this is the closest I can get for now. Uh, that's pretty sloppy, but, you know, <laughs> it's what it is. But you hear, you know, you've got this, it sounds vaguely double-tracked. Um, that's, yeah, just for the uh, middle eight, I guess, of uh, the song as we get there. That whole business. Um, that's all there is to that. Next snapshot, flange. I'm using this for the uh, end of the middle eight, I guess, going into the... I guess you could call it the last chorus, but it's like the half-time chorus, which would be something like... Or at least that's how I'm playing it. Um, there isn't really any guitar on the actual song, but I'm doing something like that. Now you can hear... The flanger opening and closing. I love that kind of sound. So, we can get loads of space with that. Alright. And as the delays fade out, it's time for me to end the video. Um, you might notice that the uh, the light illuminating me is a different colour from the beginning of the video. This is uh, intentional. This is me trying to figure out which colour light I like best. <laughs> so I thought the best thing to do would be to put both kinds of light into a video and then just look and see uh, which one I like the best of. So that's a little glimpse behind the scenes of just how amateurish I am at this. Anyway, what I'm going to do next is um, perform the song Locks Out of Heaven with the settings that I've made um, along with a live backing track of my band and, uh, and critique that. Um, you know, maybe see if I can learn something along the way. Because um, it's really hard to tell how your performance actually sounds until you record it and listen back to it. While you're actually performing, your mind is elsewhere, you know. Well, my mind is elsewhere. I don't want to, I don't know how you perform, but when I'm performing, um, there's nothing going on inside my head. I'm an I'm a empty vessel or something like that. Anyway, look, whatever. <laughs> Getting all philosophical on you. Um, yeah, so next thing I'm going to do is record the song a performance all the way through and see how that goes, critique it, etc. Next thing to do after that would be to move on to the next song on the list. I'm not actually sure what that song is yet. We'll figure it out when we get there. But I'm going to see if I can play that song using the snapshots from this song. Um, 
I'm predicting that I won't be able to. Um, I'll be pleasantly surprised if I can. Um, but let's let's see what happens. Uh, we'll uh, you know we'll find out when we get there. Anyway, that's all from me for today. Thanks for watching, and remember, cats always land on their feet. Ciao for now.